Wake up, Daddy Shelm. So if we don't do our jobs... What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Doth mother know you wear as her drapes? Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off. What are you? Genius billionaire playboy from Mental Post. There are lots of terms we can use to describe Tony Stark. However, the two words that will forever remember him as our Iron Man. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You better pack it up and get out of here. So today, I'm giving you the top 25 Iron Man flexes in the movies. Guys, stop. We gotta talk this through. It's a good talk. Now, I'm not the kind of guy who likes interventions, but if the man hosting them is Tony Stark, then pff, I'm all for it. Of course, it also depends on whether I'm an evil soldier working for Hydra as well. In this case, Iron Man teaches a whole bunch of them why it's necessary to talk things out before just shooting like morons. No, seriously, did those guys really think some measly bullets were gonna work on an Iron Man suit? Anyway, the primary appeal of this moment is Stark's composure and the way he took them down when it was his turn to return the favor. You know, I keep saying that Age of Ultron should have earned a lot more than it did in its theatrical run, but then I remember that it already made over $1.4 billion at the box office. <laughs> Maybe I got too carried away by Iron Man's lifestyle. I'm the best. We have orders. We should follow them. Following is not really my style. And you're all about style, aren't you? Of the people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not of use? We all know how much Iron Man loves to violate Captain America. So take this as a hint that you're going to see a lot of similar entries as the list progresses. These two icons began their banter right from the first Avengers movie, and oh boy, it was a sight to behold. We're all familiar with the more viral exchanges between both of these characters. Ow! Hey! Nothing. Are you nuts? Sure you Is everything a joke to you? Funny things, right? But I want to bring your attention to the time where Tony roasted Steve Rogers with point number A and point number B. I can still understand the line where he mocks Steve's spandex suit, but to straight up call the man useless after, that was a grade A flex that only a man as arrogant as Tony could pull off. I'm surprised nobody ever tried making him a Sigma male icon the same way we've got Patrick Bateman all over TikTok and Instagram. That's the guy my dad never shut up about. Wondering if they shouldn't have kept him on ice. <laughs> Agent Romanoff, you miss me? Make a move, reindeer games. You must have heard of the saying, Women want him and men want to be him. While this might have started with the James Bond books, the line's very much applicable to Mr. Stark. Of course, he's got enough money to be a sugar daddy to an entire country, but he also has a unique sense of charisma that also works in his favor. You, you can read Latin or you can yeah. write Latin, Did but you, you can't speak Latin too. Because she models in Tokyo. He's well aware of this too, as we can see here when he asks Agent Romanoff if she missed him. The scene only gets better as Iron Man shows up and gets Loki to surrender right after that. Captain America should really be thanking his stars that Tony came to his rescue because it didn't look like he was going to survive that battle. I mean, what's the point of all those push-ups if you can't even defeat a puny god, Steve? This guy packs a wallop. And still, you are pretty spry for an older fellow. You might have missed a couple things, you know, doing time as a capsicle. Fury didn't tell me he was calling you in. Yeah, there's a lot of things Fury doesn't tell you. If Thanos needs all six, why don't we just stick this one down the garbage disposal? No can do. We swore an oath to protect the Time Stone with our lives. And I swore off dairy, but then Ben and Jerry's named a flavor after me, so... So if we don't do our jobs... What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Oh man, he really did Stephen dirty here, didn't he? I mean, if you look at the bigger picture, Benedict Cumberbatch has really earned his place as an actor. He isn't just Doctor Strange, he's freaking Sherlock as well. All that effort and all those performances only to be reduced to a balloon-blowing magician at kids' parties. Jesus Christ, Tony. I know you're a savage, but you've got to take it easy sometimes, especially if you're violating the Sorcerer Supreme. I tried to bench you, you refused. Unlike everyone else in your life, I don't work for you. And due to that fact, we're now in a flying donut 
Billions of miles from Earth with no backup. Yeah, I'm aware it's technically wrong, but we all know who truly deserves the title, don't we? I've got to give it to the man, though. Even when the universe is on the brink of a cataclysmic apocalypse... Who just saved your magical ass? Me. Bro still has the creativity to come up with a savage joke. Actually, I should be giving that credit to whoever writes his lines in the script. I'm Dr. Stephen Strange. I need you to come with me. Oh, uh, congratulations on the wedding, by the way. I'm sorry, are you giving out tickets or something? I would now like to call Justin Hammer, our current primary weapons contractor. Let the record reflect that I observed Mr. Hammer entering the chamber, and I am wondering if and when any actual expert will also be in attendance. I've been a fan of the Iron Man character right from the days of his comic book and animated adaptations, so I was already familiar with his eccentric mannerisms, but even then, I was amazed to see Robert Downey Jr. take over the role as if it could only have been played by him. Mr. Stark, please. Yes, dear. Can I have your attention? Absolutely. Iron Man 2 didn't set the world on fire the same way the OG film did, but it did give us a lot of witty gems, and the one I want to mention here is when Bro violates Hammer by simply denying his credentials as an expert. Is that Justin Hammer? How did Hammer get in? Wow. I mean, he's technically correct as he rightfully exposes the charlatan for what he is in a later scene. Yeah, I'd say uh, most countries five, ten years away, Hammer Industries 20. But seriously, who even thinks like that in the middle of a court hearing? Brutal is an understatement for this man. Honestly, it's impossible. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! With a box of scraps! Well, I'm sorry. I'm not Tony Stark. Do me a favor. Try not to bring it to life. Hi, Miss Barton, you little mix. You never even hesitated. Look, it's been a really long day, like Eugene O'Neill long, so how's about we skip to the part where you're useful? Marvel's Secret Invasion has hit Disney+, Plus, and even though it's something of an upgrade from the go woke, go broke content they've been spitting out over the past couple of years, it doesn't look like the fans are showing it much love. That doesn't take away from the fact that Nick Fury has been working his butt off since anyone can remember. So when Tony openly questioned his usefulness in Age of Ultron, everyone was shook. Look me in the eye and tell me you're going to shut him down. You're not the director of me. It's not even like he said it nicely. This was a straight up insult. And I gotta give it to the man for being so tough in front of Samuel L. Jackson. Let me remind you that this is the same guy who shoots down people while talking about the Lord's good work. I am Iron Man. You think you're the only superhero in the world? Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. We'll call you. Well, did you have my numbers? No, I mean, we'll call you. Like, someone will call you. Oh. All right? From your team. Okay. That's not a hug. I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. Bye. A flex doesn't always have to be an outright display of power or wit. Sometimes, even an unintentional act can get the job done. Like this scene here in Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey, May. How you doing? What are you wearing? Something skimpy, I hope. <laughs> Forget that's inappropriate. All right, let's start over. You can edit it. We all know how much of a fanboy Spider-Man is when it comes to Iron Man, so it was only natural for him to expect a hug from his mentor while saying goodbye. Well, we all know how awkward that got, but it was still such a boss move from Tony. Don't do anything I would do, and definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do. There's a there's a little gray area in there, and that's where you operate. What does that mean that I'm an event? No. Yeah, sure, he feels like a pseudo father figure to Peter, but he makes sure he maintains his seniority, even if it means creating a super awkward situation between them. Of course, it's a funny moment, because that's like the kind of thing Marvel feels obliged to include in all of their films. But make no mistake, this is a tier one flex. Man, if something like that happened with me, I'd never show my face in public again. Let me just say, if aliens wind up implanting eggs in my chest or something and I eat one of you, I'm sorry. I do not want another single pop culture reference out of you for the rest of the trip, you understand? Hey guys, you ever seen that really old movie? Uh, Empire Strikes Back? Jesus, Tony, how old is this guy? I don't know, I didn't carbon date him, he's on the young side. What have I to fear? The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves, sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. There is no version of this where you come out on top. Maybe your army comes, and maybe it's too much for us, but it's all on you. Because if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. 
It doesn't matter if he's talking to the god of thunder or the puny god of mischief, Tony Stark makes sure he's always going to spit facts. Who knows, maybe he even tried rapping as an alternative career in one of the multiverse timelines. Uh, actually, I'm planning to threaten you. You should have left your armor on for that. Yeah, seen a bit of mileage and you've got the... Uh... Stick of destiny. In this case, he openly challenges Loki and his army without a single shred of fear in his eyes. Those are some Giga Chad level vibes right there. They'll come for you. I have an army. We have a Hulk. It's one thing to have a witchy response to every single thing Loki says to him, but on top of that, he even issues a threat to the not so terrifying villain by reminding him why his team is called the Avengers. Oh yeah, and how can I forget the part where his answer to Loki having an army was him having a Hulk? usually works. All performance issues, not uncommon. One out of five. Well, it's a fair assessment if you ask me. He's not the undisputed king of flexes for nothing. You ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. We're not finished yet. And then shawarma after. Labs all set up, boss. Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. Did say there'll be some more Captain America roasts coming your way, so here's another one of them. I'll give Tony some credit here for being nice because he actually mocks his buddy with a compliment. Shit! Language! Wait a second. No one else is going to deal with the fact that Cap just said language? I always like this kind of talk because it makes the King of Sass come across as classy without having to try too hard. Like we all know Stark Industries is funding the Avengers, but even then, a man manages to make a joke out of it while using sarcastic humility. Also, for him to call Steve the boss while tooting his own horn was somewhat wholesome if you ask me. It's actually the other way around when you look at it in real life. It's always the dudes who pay for everything that take up the title of boss without really possessing the competency to deserve it. You know, the question I get asked most often is, Tony, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? Just like that. Just keep the suit. I know, it has a filtration system. You could drink that water. Ugh, Mr. Rogers, I almost forgot that suit did nothing for your ass. No one asked you to look, Tony. It's ridiculous. Well, here you go. We've got back-to-back -back flexes against Captain America. That's exactly how much Iron Man loves him. Now, this is a unique one because bro's making fun of Steve in 2019 by looking at his 2012 version. More importantly, he's commenting on how all that spandex couldn't save his butt from looking flatter than a concrete wall. That is America's ass. I'm sure a lot of women would disagree with you there, Tony, but go on. It was pretty evident that Iron Man was pissed at Captain America during the first half of Avengers Endgame, so maybe this was the perfect way to get his point across. I think you look great, Cap. As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. Even Steve felt the burn on this one. Bro actually snapped back at Tony for mocking his glutes. For lack of a better option, dummy is still on fire safety. If you douse me again and I'm not on fire, I'm donating you to City College. <laughs> Where's your gun? Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. Okay, so here's the thing. If you're gonna make fun of Doctor Strange the first time you meet him, you can't afford for your best friend to embarrass you in front of him and Wong when an alien invasion is about to commence. Tony knows that and he makes it clear when Bruce Banner faces performance issues in bringing out the Hulk. To top things off, he also just insulted Ebony Moore after mentioning Earth's operating hours. Be thankful that your meaningless lives are now contributing I'm to sorry, the balance. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. You better pack it up and get out of here. Once again, it's a hilarious moment which shows us how Mr. Stark likes to maintain his reputation even in front of people who aren't human. I'm not gonna lie though, it would have been pretty cool to see Hulk face off against Carl Obsidian. Also, did you know his nickname is Black Dwarf? I definitely wouldn't want to meet a regular sized version of that dude. Something that okay. You can 
take away my house, all my tricks and toys. One thing you can't take away? I am Iron Man. Sometimes it's the realization of your own capabilities that sets you apart from everyone else in the room. Self-awareness has always been one of Iron Man's strongest points, but it's mostly for his fights or his sense of humor. I mean, in this case, he lets us know exactly why he'll always be Iron Man, even if you take everything away from him. And the point is that we did see it happen. He was without a suit for a pretty long time. He didn't even have his house, his assistant, Pepper, or anyone to help him out, but he still managed to get the job done. That's why the ending monologue from Iron Man 3 is the highlight of the whole film. Yeah, sure, he needs Bruce to be a shrink every once in a while, but that's pretty acceptable when you've got responsibilities like his. Nice work, guys. Excellent. Good team effort all around. Go us. <sighs> that came out of nowhere. Wow. Which leads us to believe at this juncture we'd only like to use you as a consultant. If you're the main person driving ticket sales, you should be charging the appropriate rates as well. Robert Downey Jr. knew this better than anyone else, which is why he was able to earn a buttload of moolah from each of his roles. I mean, seriously, Bro got $10 million for barely eight minutes of screen time in Spider-Man Homecoming, which is more than a million bucks per minute. That's not to say he doesn't deserve it, but still, that's a lot of dough, right? Personality overview, Mr. Stark displays compulsive behavior. In my own defense, that was last week. Prone to self-destructive, tendencies. I was dying. Textbook narcissism. Agreed? Similarly, Tony Stark knows his worth, which is why he can confidently tell Nick Fury he can't afford him. As a matter of fact, he pulled a Uno reverse and started funding the Avengers instead. Now that's what I like to call a power move. I'm not saying that Uncle Sam can kick back on a lawn chair sipping on an iced tea because I haven't come across anyone who's man enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me on my best day. The only major component he still needs is a power source, a high energy density, something to kickstart the cube. When did you become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics? Last night. I'm sure you can relate to exam pressure, especially when you've only got one night to complete the entire syllabus. It's pretty freaking hard to memorize so much stuff in a matter of hours, which is why nerds need months of prep to be able to get the grades they flex about. Nope, we don't say that. Only mommy says that word. However, Tony Stark isn't a nerd. He's freaking Iron Man, which is why he's able to become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics in just one night. Mental flexes have a separate kind of appeal to physical flexes, and this one right here is a grade A statement. How does Fury even see these? He turns. Sounds exhausting. I mean, he didn't even have to do this, but went ahead anyway and humbled the whole of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers. I wish I had that kind of memory during my teenager phase. Unless Selvig has figured out how to stabilize the quantum tunneling effect. Well, if he could do that, he could achieve heavy ion fusion at any reactor on the planet. Finally, someone who speaks English. Your work on anti-electron collisions is unparalleled, and I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. Thanks. Those weapons were out there, and I tried to tell you about it, but you didn't listen. None of this would have happened if you had just listened to me. <laughs> if you even cared, you'd actually be here. OK, it's not working out. I'm going to need to back. For how long? Forever. Yeah, let's no, 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 please, please, please. Let's just, have don't, it. You don't understand. This, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. The average Joe might assume that Iron Man's nothing without his suit, but to put it frankly, he'd be wrong. Tony Stark isn't just some random guy who's enjoying the powers of a high-tech suit. It's his creation, and he has made himself useful without it several times. That's exactly why his scolding of Peter Parker in Spider-Man Homecoming was such an important scene. Do you know that I was the only one who believed in you? Everyone else said I was crazy to recruit a 14-year-old kid. 15. No, this is where you zip it, all right? The adult is talking. Yeah, sure, he's flexing in front of his understudy, but I guess that's just a force of habit. The important thing is that he's given Spidey a very important lesson here. I just, I just wanted him to be like you. And I wanted you to be better. His identity shouldn't be limited to his suit. This makes a lot of sense, not just from a philosophical standpoint, but also from a self-realization perspective. I swear this man could start his own religion if he wanted to. Goldstein. Yes, Mr. Stark. 
Give me a fat beat to beat my body chest. <laughs> I told you to shut it down. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to exit that. I told you I don't want to join your super secret boy band. You know, I keep talking about how Iron Man loves roasting Captain America, but after doing my research for this list, I learned that he's been equally critical of Nick Fury. Ah! Oh, God, you're going to steal my kidney and sell it? This is the third entry of him flexing on the man who's supposed to be his boss, and I'm totally loving the domination here. For starters, Tony calls the Avengers a super secret boy band, which is sassy enough, then he goes a few steps further and asks Nick. I'm sorry, I don't want to get off on the wrong foot, do I look at the patch of the eye? Honestly, I'm a bit hungover. I'm not sure if you're real or if, if I'm having to do I am very real. That might be taking things a little bit too far if you ask me, but then again, I got my eye on you. With the role Samuel L. Jackson's played throughout his life, I'm sure he wouldn't mind a nice little burn every now and then. Mr. Stark, it smells like a new car in here. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to exit the donut. Oh, come on! Do not touch me again. Then don't take my stuff. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Uh, Shakespeare in the Park? Doth mother know you weareth her drapes? Of all the people Tony's roasted over the course of his existence in the MCU timeline, I'll always remember the first time he faced off against Thor. Their fight scene is a whole other story, so I won't be covering that because the humor on display here is elite. We'll put that hammer down. Uh, yeah, no. Bad call. He loves his hammer. We've all seen Thor as this overpowered god who you shouldn't be messing with. I'm listening. But Iron Man ain't about that submissive lifestyle, so we get straight to mocking the man's dress sense. The Shakespeare in the park line had me in splits and got everyone in the audience laughing as well. Loki will face as guardian justice. He gives up the cube, he's all yours. Until then, <laughs> stay out of the way. See, this is the kind of skill only a boss man like Mr. Stark can pull off. On a serious note though, Thor should really be telling his mom if he's going to be borrowing her clothes. Welcome. Voice activation required. Thor. Access denied. Strongest Avenger. Access denied. Damn you, Stark. Point break. Welcome. Point break. <laughs> My priority is to get the Iron Man weapon turned over to the people of the United States of America. Well, you can forget it. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. To turn over the Iron Man suit would be to turn over myself, which is tantamount to indentured servitude or prostitution, depending on what state you're in. For you want my property, you can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. Ah uh, yes, this is the moment that got me rooting for Iron Man more than anything else I'd seen till that point in 2010. The court hearing in Iron Man 2 was an obvious setup, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Of course, Tony knew what he was getting into, so he came prepared and oh boy, did he own everyone in that court or what? My device does not fit that description. Well, well, how would you describe it? I would your describe device? it by defining it as what it is, Senator. As? Uh, it's a, mm, a high-tech prosthesis. <laughs> Apart from exposing the senator and Hammer for being total jerks, he even goes on to declare that nobody can ever have his suit. You can't have it. Uh, look, I, I know uh, expert. In prostitution, of course not. You're a senator. Come on! <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty bold statement to make, especially if you're a celebrity on live television. But then again, that's what makes his character so lovable. He did have a point, though. If you want the Iron Man suit, Tony Stark comes along with it. It's a package deal. I tried to play ball with these ass clowns! Thank you, Mr. Stark. Thank you, buddy. We're adjourned. We're adjourned for the day. Okay. You've been a delight. One thing I've proven is that you can count on me to pleasure myself. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly, with this uh, laundry list of character defects, all the mistakes I've made. The truth is, I am Iron Man. You must have been wondering why you haven't seen anything from the OG Iron Man film until now. The thing is, it's such an epic movie that I couldn't place anything from it outside my top 10. Oh, I thought I lost you back there. 
You did, sir. The final scene in 2008, Iron Man was the game changer when it came to the superhero genre. We were used to seeing these guys hide their identity to avoid any unnecessary drama. Take Superman, for example. Bro did the bare minimum to keep his disguise, and it still worked. Tony Stark, though, is a different breed of badass, so you can't really expect him to follow any scripts. That's exactly what happens here when he ignores what his team had written for him and openly declares that he is Iron Man. Yeah, that's how you announce yourself on the big stage. And this is why we love you 3000. My name is Tony Stark and I'm not afraid of you. You just died, pal. I'm gonna come get the body. Here's my home address. 10880 Malibu Point. I'll leave the door unlocked. That's what you want, right? Oh, oh. Oh. Kill me. It's is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? For your consideration, the Jericho. See, I'm making up for the lack of entries from this film now. The Jericho missile scene cemented the kind of person Tony Stark's meant to be, and it comes straight from the horse's mouth. He ain't about being sneaky or shady about his intentions. Bro straight up admits that he wants to be feared and respected. It's not too far off from his current situation anyway, because damn, just look at that shot. It's a perfect summary of his character, because he's not the type of guy to settle for one when he can have both. Also, if you can strike a pose like that in front of a massive explosion, people can't help but respect you. I'll be throwing one of these in with every purchase of 500 million or more. To peace. Is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yes, it's very cool. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up, I'm kidding. Yeah, peace, I love peace. I'll be out of a job with peace. Well, that's a hat trick of entries from the OG flick, and honestly speaking, are you really surprised? We're in top five territory after all now, aren't we? Tony's first fight scene using the Mark II suit will probably go down in history as a defining moment when it comes to modern action sequences. His attack on the terrorists is an outright mark of dominance, and it shows in the way he took them all out without even flinching. Normally, a superhero would think twice before firing lethal shots, but Tony was too deep into his anti-hero arc to give a damn. It's no secret that my personal highlight from here is when he walks away from the tank after blowing it up. It was so badass, and all I could think about when I first saw it was Wolverine's equally badass chopper explosion scene. Now that's a crossover anyone would pay big bucks to witness. I seriously hope someone from Disney's watching these videos. Now, what am I supposed to tell the press? Uh, training exercise, isn't that the usual BS? It's not that simple. An unfortunate training exercise involving an F-22 Raptor occurred yesterday. And Pim always said you never can trust a Stark. Who are you? Come on, man. Stark? Did he give you anything on Rogers? Stop told me to go to hell. I'm going back to the compound instead, but... You can call me anytime. I'll put you on hold. I'd like to watch the line blink. This is a unique entry because it combines three separate flexes into one. The thing is, they follow one after another, so it made more sense to merge all of them together to land this high up on the list. How do you even quantify this kind of behavior? You seem a little defensive. <laughs> Manchurian candidate, you're killing me. There's a truce here. You can drop. First, he blatantly refuses to acknowledge Ant-Man as a superhero, then he indirectly tells General Ross he doesn't like taking his calls, and to put some icing on the cake, he gives us that epic suit-up scene from inside his chopper. Sheesh, that's a serious overdose of sass. On a serious note though, the scene perfectly captured the various moods of Tony Stark, savage, witty, and conflicted. I hope the Russo brothers played it out this way intentionally, because the sequence adds great context to his character in addition to moving the plot forward. Sometimes, sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. But I don't want to see you gone. We need you, Cap. Stark, we need a plan of attack. I have a plan. Attack. 
Normally you'd imagine a guy like Mr. Stark to be well prepared in the face of any adversity. While that might be true most of the time, he's also a huge fan of impromptu decisions. That can be seen here in the Avengers, when Thor shows up and takes Loki away. I agreed with Captain America when he said they needed a plan of attack to face off against the God of Thunder, but Iron Man has only one plan when it comes to such situations. Attack! It wasn't a bad plan either actually. He managed to hold his own against Thor and both of them were trading blow for blow till Steve showed up and spoilt the party for everyone. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play? To lay down on a wire and let the other guy crawl over you? I think I would just cut the one. Now I hinted at this right at the beginning of the video, and here it is landing at number two on my list. I'm not a fan of people who like to act all high and mighty in front of you, and as much as I love Captain America, I was definitely annoyed with him in this scene. Why shouldn't the guy let off a little steam? You know damn well why, back off. Oh, I'm starting to want you to make me. Luckily, Tony knew how to put him in his place with an iconic line that's still echoing through our social media algorithms. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. See, it's not just about being a genius billionaire playboy philanthropist, it's also about having the confidence to give it back to those who think they're in a position of moral superiority. On top of that, the way he came up with that response so quickly kind of made me wonder if he was waiting for a chance to deliver that line. Needless to say, everyone was impressed. But what's the Dude, use of having it healthy, and owning it healthy. a race car of course, I say competition cool. if you don't drive it? Okay, it's time to bring out the tissues everyone. I saved the best for last, but it also happens to be the most emotional one of all of them. This really was a full circle moment, not just for Tony, but for us too. I mean, we all grew up with Iron Man as a role model, and to see him exit the Marvel Universe on such an epic high was satisfying as well as tear-jerking. This was the same man who used his wit and humour to stifle his inner conflict, but when push came to shove, he stood tall in front of a force that could end the entire universe. Yes, that final snap wasn't just a reset button to fix the mess Thanos had created, it was a celebration of the character that we all came to know and love as Tony Stark. Take a bow, Robert Downey Jr. You carried the weight and expectations of fans, studios, directors, and God knows how many other people for a whole decade. At the end of it all, we can all proudly say that you and only you are Iron Man. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go cry in a corner. We're gonna be okay. You can rest now. What is and always will be my greatest creation is you. Hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel and check the descriptions for links to my socials. In the meantime, here's another video that I know you'll enjoy.